It finally happened, traders. PineScript version 5 has finally been released and my workload just increased significantly. But I'm super excited about this. Stick around and we'll break down exactly what we can expect from the new changes and improvements to the latest iteration of the PineScript programming language. So first of all, the good news is these changes to PineScript, this latest version of the PineScript language, improves and builds upon uh, version 4. So we don't need to relearn everything. If you've been following my lessons for a while or you've bought any of my courses, all of the information you've learned so far is still very much relevant. There are a few new nuances we'll need to learn, a few new changes to how we call certain functions that we'll need to learn. Basically new habits we'll need to develop, but it will be worth the trouble because these changes are intended to make PineScript even more intuitive, even more simple to use. And in this video, I'm just gonna break down some of the changes they've mentioned and explained in this blog post. And from now on, all of my new lessons will be in version five. So if you've already bought any of my courses, I am gonna go back and update the core lessons to be relevant for version five. And any new lessons I record are going to be in the latest version of PineScript. But anyway, with all that said, let's break down this blog post and have a look at what we can expect going forward out of PineScript. All right, so here is the blog post, the official blog post from TradingView. There'll be a link in the video description. And it is time to say hello to PineScript version five. Pine is now more powerful than ever. So let's go over a few things. The first most important thing to point out is that there is an inbuilt converter that will automatically convert your version four Pine scripts into version five. To do that, you just click on this little ellipses button, hamburger icon thing, whatever people call this, and click on the convert to version five button. So just real quick, let's jump over to the Pine editor and test this out. So here's the script I was working on this morning. Um, my rvol by time of day indicator that converts volume based on intraday uh, times of day. If I open up the source code to this, you can see that this is version four of the script. Let's try this out. Let's convert to version five. And there we go, easy as that. First thing I notice uh, is that version five looks pretty cool there. I like that. Um, we now call our indicator scripts indicators, not study scripts. And we have things like this ta.change. So normally in version four, you would use the change function but the training view team have added what they call namespaces. And so now to call certain functions relating to certain use cases, in this particular case, this is a technical analysis function. So it falls under TA. So I imagine if I type in TA here and press control space, we get a list of all the functions we can use relating to technical analysis, which is pretty cool because in the past you would need to look up um, all of these functions. There's a bunch here I've never even seen before, certainly never used before, and didn't even know existed because you'd have to read through the trading view documentation to find out about them. And so that's pretty cool. So now um, whenever you want to use something relating to technical analysis, we can just type in TA control space and get a list of functions we can use. So that's a cool new change that I'm sure will be very helpful when it comes to coding scripts. Um, but let's jump back over to the blog post. So that's cool, we can convert our old scripts to the latest version, that's very handy. Um, another very, very cool feature of this version five that I'm super excited about is libraries. So a key addition to Pine that comes with version five is libraries. Libraries are a new type of publication. So I'm, I'm guessing they mean you can publish this the same way we publish scripts onto the TradingView script library. And this new type of publication allows you to create custom functions to be reused in other scripts. This is effing awesome, to be honest with you. This is something I've been hoping they would add uh, for quite some time. I have a lot of scripts that rely on certain custom functions that I need to copy and paste across all of my scripts. Now I can publish a Zen in the Art of Trading PineScript library that includes all of my custom functions for things like converting pips to whole numbers, truncating decimal places, um, just random utility functions I've created over the years that help with certain repetitive activities that we uh, that I often do in my scripts. So this is really, really cool. Once a library is published, other scripts 
be it indicator strategies or even other libraries, can import it and use its functions. You can use libraries to include complex algorithms or frequently used functions so that you or the whole Pine community can easily reuse them. This is huge. This is a really, really, really awesome feature to be added to Pine, and I'm excited to explore this one um, in future lessons. Um, they also include a user manual page here on libraries, so if you want to start using them uh, before I get around to recording lessons on them, go and read this. Um, I'm sure it's going to be a fascinating read for anyone that's interested in Pine. And at the end of this post on this user manual, you will find library examples published by members of their uh, PineScript or TradingView PineCoders team. Um, so this will be great for referencing um, how to go about creating libraries for yourself. Next up, a uh, small thing here, but pretty cool as well, is the default values for user-defined functions. So this is an improvement that goes hand in hand with the new libraries functionality or feature. A default value can be defined for parameters in user-defined functions. So this would be a user-defined function right here, um, just a custom function that you anyone can create. And you can now assign a default value to the parameters in your own functions. So normally you couldn't do this. You couldn't have exp equals two. Um, you would probably, in order to achieve the same thing, need to use a VAR variable with a, or an input, user input, and you would need to use a conditional statement to overwrite this based on whether or not um, your script needed to use a different value than the default. Now you can just define the default straight up in your custom functions parameters. That's a cool little feature, not something most of us would use frequently, but definitely a great quality of life improvement, particularly when working with libraries. And that I imagine is why they've added this new feature to custom functions. So that's cool. Next up, we have switches. Switches are great. Um, they're, they're basically, they operate like an if statement. It's like having a bunch of if statements. So a great example of um, when you might need to use a switch statement is this uh, script here that I've created, this rvol indicator I was just showing you, which I was just showing you how to convert to version five. In this script, I have a bunch of color schemes, inbuilt color schemes that the user can select. And they uh, change the color scheme of my um, relative volume indicator. If I open up the source code to the script and scroll down to where the colors are defined, this is an example of something that would be much better converted into a switch statement. So instead of having four different if statements here, I could use one switch statement, pass in the bar color option, and then I could structure my switch statement to be a lot more efficient from a coding perspective. Uh, we could do the same thing I'm doing here with quite a bit less code. So that's really cool and something I will definitely be exploring in future lessons. Um, here's an example of a switch statement. So this is a custom function for getting a moving average based on whatever the user has selected from the settings menu. So we have an RMA, an SMA, an EMA, and a WMA. This switch statement, passes in the smoothing input option. So whichever one of these the user has selected, that gets passed into our switch statement. And then our switch statement here checks, is this value RMA? Then get me an RMA. If it's SMA, get me an SMA and so on. Normally you would need to use if statements to do this. And so you would have an extra line of code for each option here. Now we can do it in a switch statement, which is really cool that uh, makes coding a lot more efficient in Pine. Next up, we have drawing collections. I'm not really sure how often I'll be using this particular functionality. Uh, we'll cover this in future lessons too, probably, but this is a pretty niche thing. I don't think many people will need to um, work with drawing collections. Next up, we have a while loop. So this is pretty cool. This is very, very similar to a for loop in that it's a loop for one thing. Um, but instead of passing it a number, an index to skip through. So instead of saying, for example, four I equals zero to 10, which would loop uh, 10 times, we can now use a while loop, which will loop infinitely. Um, that's my drawing of an infinity sign. You're welcome. Um, the while statement will execute indefinitely until it is either broken out of or the Boolean condition that you're looping on uh, becomes false. So this is, um, it's like a for loop, except instead of counting, we pass it a Boolean value. So while that Boolean value is true, the loop will continue to loop 
And as soon as that Boolean value becomes false, or we use the break um, operator, break command to break out of the loop, then the loop will continue to loop forever and ever. This is useful for uh, certain use cases that we'll get into um, in future lessons, I'm sure. And then next up we have runtime error, which is a new function that now makes it possible to halt the execution of a script and display an error message on any condition you can define in Pine. This will come in handy for script creators who want to prevent users from using their indicators incorrectly. Uh, it can also be used as a debugging tool. Um, so yeah, this will be interesting to play around with. I'm sure we'll explore this in future lessons. I love to throw detailed errors in other languages when I'm working um, with code. So for example, in Java, when I'm coding in Java, I like to make sure that all of my errors, um, if the script encounters an error, I like to make sure that it's very clear what the error was and how to isolate why it happened. And so this could be really useful in Pine under certain use cases. Uh, for example, down here, we have runtime.error. Um, Session-based VWAP does not show meaningful data on timeframes above the daily chart. Please switch to a lower timeframe. So this is a cool little uh, sort of function designed for users of our scripts, I guess, more than us ourselves, unless we're using it for debugging. So that's a cool little thing. All of these little things do um, help to make PineScript uh, sort of, it helps to bridge the gap between PineScript and other more advanced programming languages in terms of feedback to the user, in terms of um, just making it a more mature programming language. So that's really good to see. And the next up, we have new strategy parameters. Good news for strategy coders. We have added a whole bunch of new variables and functions that give you visibility on trade properties, statistics, and metrics. Their values update as the broker emulator executes your orders so you can follow values as your strategy progresses. Um, so that's pretty cool. I have no idea what variables and functions they've added, uh, but we'll, we'll almost certainly explore that in future lessons and certainly explore it in the mastery course for anyone who has access to that course. So if you're a mastery course student, don't worry, I will be exploring all of these new features in detail in the course, as well as updating old lessons when I find the time. Finally, we have our new namespaces. So this is a great feature. Um, our community of Pine Coders tells us they appreciate the unprecedented rate of additions we have made to Pine in the last few years. Certainly that is true for me. I certainly appreciate it. And TradingView intend to sustain the same pace into the future. This, however, creates a constant stream of new Pine functions and built-in variables. And because as I mentioned earlier in this video, these inbuilt functions and built-in variables uh, were hidden in the documentation. You would have to go and read the documentation to find out what they were. Now, PineScript uses what is called namespaces. So they've already been slowly implementing this feature, this functionality into Pine over the past few updates. For example, their overhaul to how coloring or colors work in Pine is a good example of a namespace. So as you would know, if you are at all experienced with Pine, the latest updates of Pine, if we want to specify transparency, for example, in our script, we need to uh, do so using the color namespace. So we need to write out color dot, and then if you press control space, you'll get a list of functions, built-in functions relating to the color namespace. So this is our namespace. And then we would say, for example, color dot new, and then color dot red and then specify transparency so let's say we wanted 50 percent transparency this color dot is a namespace and now all the built-in functions i think well most of the built-in functions in pine will now use a namespace so now for built-in functions and built-in variables relating to technical analysis for example a moving average we need to write out TA dot and then whatever technical analysis function or tool or utility or variable that we want to reference. So namespaces are a common um, feature or functionality of most programming languages, definitely in Python, um, JavaScript. In Java, this would be called a class instead of a namespace, but it's all the same thing. It's basically a group. It's a collection. So TA 
holds a collection of uh, functions and, and variables relating to technical analysis. Size um, contains a list of different sizes we can use for our drawing tools. Um, STR or, uh, is short for string. So STR will hold all of the functions relating to our um, working with strings. And you get the idea. This will just make it more intuitive to work with the built-in functions and variables in PineScript. So really, really cool updates here. Uh, obviously, there are going to be a influx of new updates and features being added to PineScript in the months to come. So this is just the beginning. This is just laying the foundation for the uh, new chapter of PineScript. So you've picked a great time to start learning the language if you're new to it. And if you're an experienced Pine coder, you have even more to be excited about. So before we wrap up this video, let's just have a quick read over um, their release notes and migration guide. So again, there will be a link to this in the video description, but here we go, October, 2021, Pine version five is here. Uh, here's a list of the new features. We just covered um, pretty much all of these that are listed here. So these are the uh, new features. Um, you can read about these in your own time. We already covered most of them. Uh, and then there's changes. Um, and there's a couple of interesting changes here, like changing study to indicator, which I think is a good change. I think that makes more sense intuitively. And then we also have uh, request.security instead of just calling the security function uh, by itself. So I'm guessing request is now a new namespace and probably contains several built-in variables and functions relating to requesting data from other timeframes, other markets. And as it says here, this consolidation um, implements a more rational nomenclature and provides an orderly space to accommodate the many additions planned for Pine. That's really exciting to, to read. Um, and I think this is a great improvement to the language. And then finally, we have our migration guide here, which helps you convert your scripts into Pine 5. Um, there's a list of important changes here, which will be important to read over. I'm not going to cover all of this in today's video. You can go and read about this in your own time if you're interested. Uh, we will be covering all of this in future lessons. All my future lessons will be written in Pine 5, so we'll learn all, all of this stuff gradually over time. Um, one thing that catches my attention here is the split of input into several functions. Okay, so they've changed how inputs work. So now input is a namespace and we need to reference certain types of inputs, which is uh, interesting. Um, at first glance here, it does look like it makes it a little bit easier to write. It's just a little bit less code here. Now, instead of specifying a type, we just use an inbuilt um, function of the input namespace. And transp has finally been deprecated. So we can no longer use transp in version five of PineScript, which was a long time coming. All right, so I think that'll just about do it for today's sort of um, overview and introduction to what's coming or what is now here with PineScript version five. My future lessons, as I've mentioned several times now, will be written in PineScript version five. So we will learn all of this stuff um, gradually. There's not a lot to learn here, just some new habits to develop, uh, which is fine that this is, this is what programming is. You can't stagnate as a coder. We are always forced to adapt, grow as coders, learn new features. Um, and it's all in the quest of making Pine more useful, more powerful and easier to use in the long run. So even though this is a inconvenience for some of us who are very familiar with version four of PineScript, especially for me where I've recorded hundreds of hours of content on version four. Now, most of that is still relevant to today's version of PineScript version five. So I'm not too bummed out about that, but there are now some um, important changes to PineScript that I will need to learn and I will need to go back and update a lot of my old lessons. I'm going to need to re-record the entire basics course, my free PineScript basics course, and several of the lessons in the mastery course, but that's fine. It's going to be worth the trouble, and I will be back very soon with a new lesson in PineScript version five. I'm really excited about that, and I will speak with you soon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care, be safe, good luck with your trading next week, and into the future and I'll speak to you soon. Take care.